C is an old programming language, so why is it still very widely used? The fact of the matter is that C doesn't have many of the things that we take for granted in most modern programming languages, and that includes object orientation. Other languages, from Java and C Sharp to Ruby and Object Pascal, are object oriented. In theory, object orientation helps us to write reusable, modular, well organised code, and C doesn't have it. C doesn't do garbage collection either. In Java and C Sharp, you don't have to worry about allocating memory for data and then freeing it up when you no longer use it. It's all done automatically. A built-in garbage collection tool mops up memory when it's no longer being used in your program. In C, you have to do all that yourself. And if you get it wrong, you end up with memory leaks. That means you end up using more memory than your program needs. And in some cases, getting memory allocation and deallocation wrong can result in hard-to-find bugs and program crashes. I'm Hugh, and you're watching a lesson in my course on programming C in Visual Studio. The fact of the matter is that C is a much simpler language than Java, C Sharp and many other more modern languages. Those languages have features at a higher level of abstraction. C works at a lower level closer to the way the computer hardware works. The benefit of that is that C lets you communicate directly with the hardware and poke around in memory in a way that many other languages just don't. That's one reason why C programs can be so fast and efficient. But the power of C comes with a price. Other languages have lots of safety barriers built in that can prevent you from doing really stupid and dangerous things. Well, C doesn't which means that when things go wrong in a C program, they can go really wrong. And that means you have to take a lot more care and sometimes write a lot more code to do things in a C program that would be relatively simple, safe and easy to do in Java or C Sharp. To a programmer, C is like a ring of power to a wizard. It gives you a frightening amount of power, but it's up to you to make sure that you wield that power with care. Otherwise, things can go horribly wrong. C was developed way back in the early 70s. It was the successor to another language called B. Yes, really. And B was the successor to a language called BCPL, which was developed at the University of Cambridge. I always thought BCPL stood for Better Cambridge Programming Language. But after searching online, I see that BCPL actually stands for Basic Combined programming language. Anyhow, BCPL was based on CPL. So in the 60s, we went from CPL to BCPL, then from BCPL to B, and finally, in the early 70s, to C. While the features and syntax of C have changed quite a bit since then, really they haven't changed very much. You can go back to the first edition of the C programming language, a book published in the late 70s, and run most of the programs pretty much unchanged on a modern compiler. That book was co-authored by Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie. Ritchie was the man who created C, and the book is still regarded as an important reference to the language. If you've never programmed before, C can be intimidating. In fact, if you're a complete beginner, I'd advise you to start with a different language, such as C Sharp, for example. But for a more experienced programmer, a knowledge of C is not only useful, I'd say it's pretty much essential. Once you get to grips with C, you will have a much deeper understanding of the art and science of programming than you would if you'd only used a more programmer-friendly language like C Sharp or Java. Because with C, you really do have to know how the computer works, how data is stored in memory, how strings and arrays work. And to do that, you have to understand memory, memory addressing, pointers, memory allocation, all kinds of other stuff that other languages may hide from you. Learning C is going to be an exciting journey, but it is not going to be an easy one. As long as you are prepared for a bit of hard work and a few setbacks along the way, learning C can be fascinating. In fact, it might completely change the way that you look at computer programming in general. Thanks for watching. To be notified whenever I upload new lessons, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. 
To follow this course in order, bookmark the playlist which is shown under this video.